Three-way to the flop. Well, it's not a set for Islami, it's quads. Ali needs to tread lightly so we can get some value out of this. Instead, he decides to raise. I've made a huge mistake. That's a very nice hand, pocket jacks. And he just calls. So when Kaufman just calls here, he's hoping Sorrentino raises. He's fully setting a trap right now. There's no way he's folding. He wants Sorrentino to push him around, and he might. Yes, yeah, This Sorrentino. could be all in. We could have Sorrentino raise, Kaufman all in. I'm betting that we have a, a confrontation here. Sorrentino with the king, queen, the two overs <coughs> to the jacks. Just looking at how many <coughs> chips Kaufman has. Sorrentino is the chip leader, and often the chip leader is going to be more aggressive. And here he goes. He's going to raise. He puts a cherry on top, one of the burgundy chips. So that's another 500,000. So now if you're Kaufman, it's, this is do or die, right? You got jacks. You're up against a chip leader who might have anything. This is the time to go for it and go all in. The question is, will Sorrentino call with King Queen? He Kaufman just called? Continues to play it slow, no, just calls with the jacks. That's really surprising. With his stack size and only having 20 bigs. And look at that. Oh, boy. <laughs> King Jack 10 on the flop. That is top pair for Sorrentino. Plus, he's got the straight draw. Kaufman with a set of jacks and checks it. Yeah, this is one of those situations where I, I'll, if, I, if I'm wrong here, I'll quit commentary. We're going to see these two players get it all in. Sorrentino's got to love that flop. Top pair. And he's got the open straight draw. Ace or a nine. Kaufman, he's got three jacks. You're never going to fold here with that, especially with these chip stacks. Okay, so Sorrentino about to bet. There's the continuation bet. Do you think we now see the raise from Kaufman? If not now, when? <laughs> We're running out of time. I think for Kaufman, he has to be a little bit worried about the potential draws on that board. So he might want to just protect what's in the middle, stick it all in, and, uh, you know, if Sorrentino folds, great. You pick up a nice addition to your stack. No, just a call. He just calls the 750k. Slowest play ever. Very strange here. The turn card is the case jack. Wow. He's just turned quads. I think there's a potential here for Sorrentino to get away from losing all of his chips here because Kaufman misplayed this hand. He should have sprung the trap either before the flop or on this flop. Kaufman checks the turn. Action on Sorrentino. Sorrentino's got to hate that card, right? He thinks to himself, well, I've got a king. So the jack is a very likely card for my opponent to have, and now he's checked it back. Yes, Sorrentino says, let's see the river for free, which is the inconsequential three of clubs. Well, this hand was played very strangely. This is not typical of what you see uh, at a final table of such a large event. Kaufman playing extremely cautious, and I think it's going to cost them some value. So 3.15 million in the pot. So now you expect to see about one and a half million bet from, from Kaufman and Sorrentino going to call. And uh, Kaufman's going to miss out. Well, he's going to miss out value on a lot. Look at this. This There's the bet. really Quick poorly played. Call. And uh, yeah, can you beat that? Can you beat the nuts? <clears throat> no, no. Oh, shit. You can't beat the nuts. 975,000, but he could have lost a oh, lot more. If I'm Sorrentino right now, I'm saying, thanks, Kaufman. Yeah. You know, even though I lost this hand, I got to feel good about the fact that I didn't lose even more. Action on Roger Spitz with pocket jacks. 35,000, wow. Blinds are four and 8,000. It's a little bit larger than the standard size raise, which would have been something more like 24,000. Feldinger takes a peek and folds, as does Bas van Leer. Marcus gets out of the way over to the young 23-year-old American living in Thailand, Nicholas Bamman with pocket nines. It's bigger it is. That it is. Generally speaking, a big raise like that represents a hand like two jacks. Call. Call. He will make the call. I don't fault him here for making the call. I think Bamman's doing the right thing. Huge underdog here as we go to the flop. And the flop, there is a nine, queen, eight. Incredible flop here. Three nines for Bamman, but Spets with a pair of jacks gives him also a straight draw. Bamman checks, as does Spets, and we go to the turn. The turn is a four of spades. Bamman, obviously, with the best hand, three nines, is going to bet out 50,000. If I was Spets here, I might think that my two jacks are good. 
There was no bet on the flop. Just left. Asks for a count. 133. It looks like Spets is trying to pick up a read. He's looking over at him, trying to gauge whether or not Bamin is really strong or is maybe making a little bluff. He's counting out. Big stack of chips. That's more than 50,000. Oh, I would expect at least the call from Spets. That a queen? We don't even have a queen. Hmm? Oh, a bit of information being traded there. Well, Spets asking him if he has a queen, that's kind of giving away information about his own hand. By, by sh you know, showing that he's worried about the queen, it Logical. represents that maybe he has a pair of jacks or tens, which is exactly what he has here. So I think Bamman has a read on what he's got. Four nines! Oh my goodness, Spets called and Bamman's hit quads. Bamman with the check mark, which means he cannot lose this hand unless he folds, which I don't think he's going to do. I haven't seen that in a while. And he's all in, okay. He's putting the pressure on Spets, and now Spets here has to ask himself, what am I up against here? I can't beat a queen. I can't beat him if he has 10 jack. Of course, if he has a nine, I'm dead. If jacks. Wow. wow, did you hear that? Jacks. Bamman just called out his hand. That must be intimidating for a player when you're at the table and the player opposite you calls your hand. Yeah, but I don't know if I would have done that there. That's why you're smiling, because he's got the jack. I wouldn't have done that if I was Bamman. Oh, that's what you have. Jacks. I'm asking you, you have jacks. Yeah. Now that's honesty. That's a pretty good read. Out of nine. I fold him. Wow, an excellent lay down there by Roger Spetz. I think he totally no, sure picked up some information on the river, and Bamman made a little bit of a mistake there, being a little too relaxed and, and normal. It was pretty clear there that he had a strong, strong hand. And it's top set for Uma. Elkie's up and down. So is, uh, excuse me, so is Judah. Yes. And Weber's got a piece as well. Second pair top kicker. This gets checked around. Quads. Whoa. We got quads here. It's hard to make a pair, but it's easy to make quads. If your name is pair, apparently. Chunky bet from Nemo and Weber calls. He folds. Well done. You know, we'd seen a lot of people just kind of go crazy in spots like that before, so I think anything was possible, but good fold on the ter on the paired board. Oh, geez, I'm just not very happy about this board, but I'm going to bet. I don't see how he gets paid here by a nine on a straight heat paired board. But I'm very, very unsure about my hand, and I'm all in. <laughs> nice try, Nemo. When you say okay, I think he's just saying okay. I agree that that was the amount of the bet. <laughs> okay, not okay. I'm calling the all in. Ace nine. Right. Makes it four thousand two hundred. Owen Crow. Who's got kings? Usually a spot for a three bet, especially against under the gun. Crow just calls. So D. Oliveras in big, big trouble here. Wow, he flops quads. Snuh. Check, check, and a check. He insta checks. Crow checks behind. D. Oliveira kind of needed to bet that flop. It may just end up being too suspect to check flop, then bet turn and river. <laughs> 6,100. The good news for him is that he's up against the second nuts on a board where it's very difficult to have the first nuts. Crow calls. Delavera has less than a pot size bet behind. A deuce on the river. Let's see how much the tuition is to attend Val U. Wow, he bets small, 8,300. Certainly small enough to get a call from a wide range. Owen's already got chips. Nah, but see, you suspect, Andre. You suspect. Crow calls. Ace in your face. Watch it. Check so fast in the flop. I knew he had it. Just quad aces. 
Ali Islami. Islami's out of position, perfectly fine just to call. He will make that call from the small blind. And Shane Schlager also has ace-king suited from the big blind. Shane's out of position to Woodward. There's a good chance he'll want to play with the lead. And he will re-raise. It's a three bet to 22.50. Matt Woodward will make the call in position. Islami's immediately getting three to one with everyone deep enough to give him some nice implied odds. So he will call and go set mining. With Schlager and Woodward sharing outs, Islami's threes are the favorite. Three-way to the flop. Well, it's not a set for Islami, it's quads. <laughs> Pretty hard to flop someone dead. Ali needs to tread lightly so we can get some value out of this. He should check to the razor. And he does. And there is the continuation bet from Shane Schlager, 4,600. Shane was the last aggressor. Matt Woodward will make the call. This is really a dream scenario for Islami. You have the stone super quad nuts and there's betting going on in front of you. A nice smooth call here should work. Instead, he decides to raise. I guess he's trying to get value here from an overpair to the board. No matter what you do in that spot, it's gonna look strong, but might as well choose the weaker looking of the two options. Schlager folds to the raise to 11,600. Woodward with the decision. And he folds as well. Ali Islami has chased away all of his action. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> 